pupils at the top end of Key Stage 2 need to build on basic musical skills learnt in the earlier years to become confident performers and composers. In this programme, we see a Year 6 class during two music lessons, which form the early part of a unit of work on composing songs. In the first lesson, they use words to compose rhythmic phrases, and in the second, they transfer these onto percussion and add a beat. Music advisor Helen McGregor will be observing and taking part in the lessons. And I knew something <laughs> about the structure of pop songs. Right. Um, and I use that as my way in. We've reached the stage now where I, I think we're kind of ready to look at some software. It might be an idea for them to compose their own patterns and try them out right. physically themselves um, before they start putting them onto a piece of software. I firmly believe that everyone's musical and everyone can teach music up to the end of Key Stage 2. It does get more complicated at the top of Key Stage 2 because there's more musical vocabulary, but it's not difficult. It's just that teachers don't have the experience or the training or a role model within their school maybe to work with them. So we're going to look at using rhythmic pattern of lyrics today. We were building on a unit of work that um, it's focusing largely on the contrast between the rhythmic pattern of the chorus and the verse. And this is where I started this lesson. Chicken tastes better with chips. That's going to be our verse. Can anyone think of another way in which we could make a rhythmic pattern out of that? Joe. Chicken tastes better with chips. Chip, chip. That's fine, that's fine, that's all right. So can you count the rhythm? Everybody join in. Is our verse the same as our chorus, the same rhythmic pattern, or is it slightly different? It's different. It's different, okay, so we need a different rhythmic pattern for this. Ripper tucker, chippy dinner. <laughs> okay, so even if you look at the word ripper, bupper, it's got that strong rhythm to it. So okay. we're using the so rhythmic phrase, element ripper, as a starting point for composing the new verses. Yes, I wanted them to be aware of the obvious difference between the chorus and verse, but the rhythm seemed a, a, an easy way in. So where I wanted to go with the lesson today was to give them the lyrics to start off with um, and to investigate what rhythmic patterns they could come up with themselves that were contrasting. OK, just turn around to someone sitting next to you and see if you can very quickly come up with a rhythm for that. I'll give you a one minute. <laughs> right, guys! So when you're ready, off you go. The rest of you join in if you want. Okay, can you just do the rhythm? Okay, anyone else? Flynn. Ripper, Tucker, Chippy, Dinner. What about the beat for that? The rhythm? You can give us that. I was just wondering whether the children are clear about the use of the word beat and rhythm because they're two words that are often used. Um, to mean the same thing, and in fact, in musical terms, they don't mean the yeah, same. Yeah, at the outset, I don't think they probably are clear which is which. Because the beat is the constant. Right. Um, it's like a pulse that goes yeah, all the way yeah. through, if you think of your heartbeat. Yeah. So if you're saying chicken is <coughs> better with chips, can you clap that? So. And I'll put the beat in. Chicken tastes better with chips. And that's what the skill that you're trying to develop with the children, that they're able to feel that pulse in their bodies because that keeps everything together and it all hangs on that like a skeleton. Yeah. Your job today is to look at these lines here. What I want you to do is to come up with a verse that's very different to the rhythm of the chorus. In your groups you had before, I'm going to give you ten minutes. So if you want to get in your groups... I really like the way that you gave them a very, very simple task. They were very clear about what the task was, but there was enough flexibility for them to come up with very inventive mm, ideas. Yeah. Chinese barbecue roof. Chicken, 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 chicken nuggets. Chocolate tastes better than chicken. He made them feel able to make up silly rhythms, fun rhythms. They were totally unrestricted in their use of words, so they actually came up with quite complex little rhythm patterns using words. Now you sing your verse and see what the contrast is. They were working at their own level, using their own ideas very independently, 
which they should be by year six, but not all children are able to get to that stage if they're not given plenty of opportunity to develop those skills. Even though Steve's only had that class for a few weeks, um, they're obviously used to doing group work, probably in their literacy and numeracy and core curriculum activities, and he is able to do composing in groups very readily without any problems at all. And that really does give the children an opportunity to work at their own level. Although you actually only ask them to do a rhythmic composition, a lot of them had melodic shape to it. Mm. So although you decided to do a rhythmic activity because you're not particularly confident about singing, the children yeah, no, <laughs> are probably it, yeah. more confident than yeah. you are. And we're beginning to compose melodies as well as rhythmic phrases. It's going beyond what mm. you ask them to do. We are chicken burgers. Bug, 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 chicken, chicken. Fish fingers, fish fingers, fish fingers and chips. Fish, fingers and chips. So, Ben, yeah. which group are you with? You and these two? I wanted to bring the groups back together. One, obviously, to recap on, on the objectives for the lesson. Two, to actually see whether the children had achieved, achieved those objectives um, by listening to them in their groups. And three, collectively, to see if we could bring it together as a performance. They're actually really dependent on reading the words. Probably suggest is actually having a shorter phrase for a start so they can remember that phrase. So get rid of the books, yeah. get some eye contact from them, establish yeah. the beat, decide on their rhythm. I think they think they know what their rhythm is actually. Yeah, it's, uh, it's I mean, just that there's no really strong feeling of beat. So they actually need to practice it so that they feel confident with it and they maybe need to, to mm. move to it. Chocolate tastes better with milk. Shake chocolate tastes better with milk. Shake chocolate tastes better with milk. Shake chocolate tastes better with milk. Shake. I wanted to get up and join yeah. in at that point and you were joining yeah. in sort of sitting on your chair and there were several other children who were really itching to yes, get up and yeah. do that. I think, I think that would have been a nice thing to do. Maybe march out back to the classroom. Yeah, they could even... Like these girls have done, have a dance that goes with their pop song that was further down the road from that rhythmic chips. pattern. Fish fingers, fish fingers, fish fingers, fish fingers and chips. chips. OK, what we're trying to do is contrast between the verse and the chorus. This is our chorus. Ripper, tuck a chippy there. I'm going to use that in between each verse. Everybody join in for the chorus. One, two, three, four. Chicken might go better with beans, but chips taste better with sauce. The fact that he chunked the lesson into three sections and given enough time for each of those sections for the children to feel secure at the beginning but then develop their own ideas independently in the middle and then reinforce that by sharing them and performing them to the rest of the class meant that he got the most out of the time that was available. Really, really cheesy chips, cheesy chips. Ripper, tuck a chippy dinner. Steve obviously enjoys music and he conveys that to the children but we discovered when we started working with him and with the children um, that they were a little bit confused about the words rhythm and beat and he was a little bit confused about the words rhythm and beat as well and wasn't sure of the distinction between the two of them so we decided to build in some key skills lessons. Um, so we're going to look at identifying the beat of a basic verse and chorus something we didn't do last week, and identifying the rhythm of a basic verse and chorus. And then the second part of the lesson, we're going to look at using instrumentation to create a beat and a rhythm. <laughs> What's the beat? Any ideas? Any suggestions? Anyone want to explain? Ben? Is the bit that goes... Yeah. Is that the beat or is that the rhythm? That's the rhythm. That's the rhythm. What is the beat behind that? Yes. Speed up. One, two, three, four. So this group over here, this half here, I want you to sing the verse for me and then we'll get the rhythm from it. Chicken, chips. Let's stop it there. Can we clap that rhythm? Right, this side, you're going to do the beat to that. Remember, it was Colin who identified it perfectly. One, two, three, four. 
He can. Let's see open. So then we've got what we call a layer. We've got the beat underneath and then the rhythm over the top. Beat and rhythm, very, very simple concepts, but nobody had explained it to him before. It's not difficult to find an explanation and to understand it and put it into practice, but it does improve the quality of, of what you're give, giving the children. Um, and if they can be introduced to new musical vocabulary, then you're improving their learning in music. What we're going to do is use instrumentation to create our rhythm and our beat. Three, four, one. Thank you very much. Jay Han. We want another instrument to play our rhythm. This better with chips, join it. Chicken says better with chips. Chicken says better with chips. Okay, let's stop there. Two of you will be on an instrument. One doing the beat, one doing the rhythm. We're going to clear the room so you can do that in your groups. We'll do that quickly and then we'll get going. Get your music books out. They're also very used to clearing the classroom. It takes just a few seconds and they've got the tables pushed back, the chairs out of the way, and they can make a space on the floor, which was quite important with the work they were doing because they needed to make eye contact with each other in order to um, collaborate over their original word rhythms and, and practice them together as a group and make the beat and the rhythm coincide. One of the strong points of both of the lessons, I think, was that he modelled everything with the class first of all. So they were really secure about what the learning objective was, what the aim of the lesson was, and how to go about achieving it. Putting their rhythms onto instruments proved problematic for some of the groups because their rhythms were more sophisticated and they were physically confident at playing. Um, but they were motivated to do it and they achieved it. If you have got the confidence to do music in the classroom, you notice that your children develop self-confidence, their ability to work together develops, their listening skills are improved, their concentration skills, and also it's a creative process. So if you give them the opportunity to compose, children come out with the most wonderful ideas that you would never have dreamed of. I think it just enhances any curriculum and you know, we can see some of the results of that from the children that we've worked with. Good job. Good job.